Praise the Lord, dear friends. Welcome to Good News Channel and your very own prayer time. A shalom from me, Madhubala Ernest. God has kept you covered under the shadow of his almighty wings. He has protected you from every harm and danger and he has been providing for all our needs and we are grateful to him for that. It's such a joy, dear friends, to meet you week after week in this fashion and to sit alongside with you and to discuss the Word of God and to pray together. And uh, right now we are doing the prayer of Jesus, the prayer that he offered to his Father on behalf of his disciples. And we are seeing how powerful this prayer is and what a mighty weapon prayer is and how we have access to the Father and that we can have our desires which are according to the will of God granted through prayer. And so as we continue to get into this portion, let us look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as our heads are bowed in your presence, we continue to offer praises and thanksgiving to you. You are a great and mighty God. You are the Rose of Sharon, the bright and morning star. You are the Ancient of Days. Lord, we just want to praise and thank you because you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him who sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. O oh God, we prostrate ourselves before you. We worship you, we adore you, we glorify you, and we magnify you. As we, Lord God Almighty, meditate on your word, we pray that you will release your anointing upon us. Help us to understand your word as you want us to. Holy Spirit, God, take control of this session. Teach us about Jesus Christ. Teach us about the Heavenly Father. Teach us the way that we need to live and teach us the power of prayer. We give you all honor and glory, surrendering all our viewers into your loving and precious hands. Pray that you will allow us to concentrate and meditate on your word this half hour. And that, Lord, this will be so, such a blessing to each one of us that we would not remain the same. We give you honor and glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Amen, and Amen. So we praise and thank God, dear friends, for the prayer that Jesus has been praying for his disciples. And today we will complete that prayer. We have been going about it slowly, trying to understand what Jesus has been praying. And last week, even as we were looking at it, we saw uh, how Jesus was talking about his going back to the Father. And we had also seen about death, that we are afraid of death. And I had shared my experience with you when my mother was dying and I was beside her and how I, uh, I was face to face with death. I, I saw how my mother went to be with the Lord the passing from this world to the next was such a beautiful transition for her that I realized death is nothing to be feared, but death is a sweet transfer from this life to the next. So we had done that last week and this week we continue uh, as to what Jesus is continuing to pray for his disciples. And so, uh, of, I'm reading the 14th verse, it says, I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Jesus is talking about his disciples and he's saying that he is not of the world and neither are we of the world. If we go up to the 13th verse, it says, I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. So Jesus is talking to the Father and telling him that I am coming back to you. And this is what we had uh, read uh, last week as well in a different form. 
uh, that when he tells the father that I'm coming back to you. And again he's saying, I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. This is the prayer that Jesus is making, that we would have the full and complete joy of Christ in our lives. Prayer can give us that joy, my dear friends. Most of us are so discouraged, disappointed. We go into depression, we are sad, and we, we feel sorry for ourselves sometimes. There is self-pity and all sorts of situations that we go through. We feel our mood swings and, and we feel sad and sorrowful. But here Jesus is saying something very beautiful. He's saying, Father, I am coming back to you, but I am speaking this prayer so that you would release joy into the lives of my disciples. When he came and he saw them after his resurrection, he said, peace. He breathed peace upon them. Jesus gives us peace. Jesus gives us joy. And the peace and the joy that Jesus gives us, this world cannot give us and money cannot buy. So it is so very important, my dear friends, for us to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. In, we read in Psalms 16, verse 10 and 11, when we read it says, in his presence there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So we seek pleasures, we seek joy, but we seek pleasure and joy in the wrong places. We think entertainment of this world can give us joy. If we take some things that intoxicate us, if we take liquor or drugs or alcohol, all those things, we think that will give us a kick and a and, and fill us with joy. We think some entertainment movies or clubs or different kinds of entertainments will give us joy, but those are temporary joy for a little while. As long as you are under the influence of those things, it gives you joy. But once that is gone, then you are back in the same old condition. But this joy that Jesus gives, whether you are in pain, whether you are in sorrow, there will be a joy that would well up from within your heart and it will overflow. Joy is different from happiness. Happiness depends on the happenings around you, the situations and circumstances. At a birthday party, you are happy, but if things are not going your way, you are sad. But joy does not change with situations and circumstances. It does not depend on happenstance. It just keeps welling up from within your heart and it comes from within. And that is the joy that Jesus wants to give to you and to me. And so this is the privilege that Jesus gives us. He says, I, I'm speaking this while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. This is not the joy that the world gives. This is the joy that Jesus had. It says, for the joy that he saw when he saw us, that we would be saved. For that joy, he even was ready to go to the cross. You can imagine the sufferings that he went through at the cross, but even at that point of time, there was a sense of joy in his heart because he knew as a result of his suffering and as a result of his pain and as a result of his laying down his life, he would be able to save the world from their sins. So my dear friends, Jesus wants to give us that joy, that peace that passeth all understanding. I have given them your word and the world has hated them. So Jesus has given us his word, and that is the word that we are meditating upon. Jesus has given us his word, and when we have this word in us, the world will hate us. Dear friends, many of the churches we find, you know, all over the world, not just in India. Now we are seeing in India as well, before it was not so, before we had 
full freedom of worshipping and no one stopped us from worshipping in the churches. But now they can walk into the churches when people are praying and they start breaking things and, and beating up the people. The pastors are beaten up. The evangelists who go to the villages to preach are beaten up. There are prayer meetings that are disrupted everywhere. What are they doing? Is flesh trade going on there? Is drinking going on there? Is gambling going on there? What bad thing are they doing? Are they using abusive words? Are they cursing over there? Or are they robbing? Or what are they doing in those places where they are being beaten up? They are reading the word. They are hearing the word and they are praying. Their crime is that they are worshipping the living God. Their crime is that they are hungering and thirsting for the word. Their crime is that they have gone to that place to listen to the word of God. And that is why they are being beaten. They are being hated for the reason of receiving the word of God. People are being now discouraged from listening to the word from the Bible. When you talk to them, they say, no, we don't want to hear the Bible. This, this book is a dangerous book. We don't want to have anything to do with this book. The enemy will not allow the word of God, the truth to penetrate into our hearts or go into your, our ears because this is a two-edged sword. The powerful word of God that brings about a total transformation in our lives and so Satan doesn't want that. He knows that we will miss hell and we will get on to the way to heaven and so here he says that they have hated, the world has hated because of the word that is in our heart. It says the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Jesus was not of the world. He came from heaven to transform us to redeem us, to bring us back to God. We were from God because God created Adam with his own hands. And then he breathed the breath of life into Adam. And so Adam was God's property. Adam also did not belong to the world. He was placed in the world by God. He was God's possession. He was the son of God in a way because God had created him saying, let us create man in our own image. And he had created man to have fellowship with him. And then he created the woman so that the man and woman, they will have fellowship with each other and together they would have fellowship with God. And then Satan entered into the Garden of Eden and he deceived the woman and the woman took of the forbidden fruit. She ate and gave to her husband as well and the two of them ate and then they went and hid among the bushes because they heard the Lord coming in the cool of the day in the evening to have fellowship with them. And God said, Adam, Adam, where are you? And he said, I heard you coming in and I was afraid and so I'm hiding. He said, why were you afraid? Every day I've been coming. It's nothing new. But he said, I was naked. And Jesus said, did you eat of the fruit? And he said, the woman that you gave me. And when the woman was asked, she said, the serpent beguiled me. So they were blaming each other for the wrong that they had done. They had lost out on the fellowship that God had created them for. They had lost out on the authority. God had given them dominion and authority over the entire universe, over all creation. He said, take care of it and have dominion. Multiply, replenish the earth. The blessings were given to them. But they missed out by disobedience. They gave in, they surrendered to Satan and they succumbed to the deceit of the enemy. And Satan took that power and authority from them. And so Adam became the man of the world because he disobeyed and he lost out on his holiness with which God had 
created him. And so having lost his authority and dominion to Satan, he had become part of the world. But we are redeemed and we are taken out of the world by Jesus Christ. So he became our redeemer. There was a little boy who lost out on his little boat that his father had made for him. He was playing along the riverside and his father had told him, I've made this boat for you. Play in small puddles. Never put this in the river. You will lose it. But the child, he played in puddles, but he didn't really enjoy because he didn't see the speed of water taking his boat. And so he went by the riverside and he thought that I will be able to catch the boat as it flows along the river and he put it into the river but the river was flowing very fast and the boat was just washed away. He ran after it but couldn't get it, went back to the father crying and when the father saw that it was gone he said I told you and you didn't listen to me. A few days later, they went to the neighboring village and in the shop, they found that boat in the, in the showcase. And the boy went recognizing his boat. He said, that's my boat. And he, the shopkeeper said, I found it by the riverside and I have polished it and I have kept it in, in the showcase. I won't give it to you because now it is mine. I found it. And the boy started crying. And he said, how much will you sell it for? And he placed a big price on it. And then he went home crying and he said, Dad, that boat of mine is in that shop and that man is not giving it to me. It's mine, but he's not giving it to me. And he's asking me for a big price, which I cannot pay. The father took hold of his son's hand and went back to the shop. And he paid the price, took the boat, gave it to his son and said, now be careful, keep it carefully. So dear friends, that's what happened to us. We lost out on our dominion and authority that God had given by disobeying the father. But then father went and paid the price once again, redeemed us from this world and made us his very own. That is what he's saying. He says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. Because he says, the world has hated them, not because they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. So we are not of the world, my dear friends. We were of the world, but Jesus has redeemed us by paying a heavy price for you and me. And he has purchased us back and given back the authority and power and the fellowship that we had with God from the very beginning. And then he says that they, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. And that is why even when we pray the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught his disciples. He said, do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We need to pray, my dear friends, every single day. We may be strong believers. We may be believers who fast and pray every day. But we need to pray for protection every single day because we do not know in what form the enemy will come to us. We do not know what kind of a net or bait he will bring for us each day so that he will pull us down into sin. He who did not leave Jesus is not going to leave you and me. 40 days he tempted Jesus in the wilderness. And when 40 days were over, he still didn't give up. And he thought, now he has become weak and I have a chance to grab him. And so he went and said, if you are hungry, you just ask for, take these stones and make them bread and eat. He took him up and he said, jump up from here. He showed him the whole world and said, I will give them to you if you would only bow down and worship me. He didn't leave Jesus. He tempted him. 
Jesus had to pray for protection for himself and he's praying for protection from evil for you and for me. And we need to pray not only for ourselves, but for our families and also for our friends that they would be protected from all evil. And then he says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. My dear friends, we need to be sanctified. And this sanctification comes with the help of God. In our own strength, we cannot be holy. We cannot be sanctified by ourselves. It is the word that sanctifies us by the washing of the word. With the word, we need to wash ourselves. With water, we wash our bodies. If we take a dip in a river, if we take a dip in a well, if we take a dip in the water, our skin, our outer body is washed, but our innermost being cannot be cleansed with water. It has to be cleansed with the water or that is the word of God, the truth that is the word of God. When this word gets into our system, when we internalize this, it cleanses our soul, it cleanses our spirits and strengthens us. So it says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. And so that is why the word of God is so very important, my dear friends. When we read the word of God, we are sanctified, we are cleansed, we are made strong. I have sent them into the world for them I sanctify myself that they may be truly sanctified. So he's saying that as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Friends, Jesus is sending us into the world. He's sanctifying us and sending us into this evil world, this world that is full of darkness, this world that is full of sin, this world that is full of evil, this world as light and as salt, Jesus is sending us out. Just like as he came as the light of the world from heaven into this dark world to spread his light, to spread his holiness, to spread the beauty of the Father in the same way he is asking you and me to do the same thing, that we would be the light of the world, that we would sanctify ourselves, even Jesus as he sanctified himself. Jesus says, I am sending them, I have sent them into the world, for them I sanctify myself, that they may be truly sanctified. This is such an important verse, my dear friend. It says, for them I sanctify myself that they too may truly be sanctified. Did Jesus need to sanctify himself? Yes, he did need to sanctify himself because he had stripped himself of completely of his divinity and he had become a complete man. He was totally human and there were every chance of him to commit sin. He was tempted, in Hebrews it says, he was tempted just like we are tempted in every area. We have just a few episodes, we have been doing the temptations of Jesus Christ. He was tempted, he could have given in. Even in the garden of Gethsemane, we will see. He says, Lord, if it be your will, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. The weakness he's expressing, I'm not able to drink this cup. It's going to be difficult for me. Can you please remove this cup? He was totally human, my dear friends. He fought the enemy tooth and nail. He fought with the enemy every single day, every moment he fought the enemy to keep himself holy, to remain sanctified. Jesus came into the world, not just as the savior of the world, not just as the redeemer of the world, but he also came to be a model for you and me 
to show us that as human beings, we could lead a pure and holy life. We will have the power to resist every temptation. We can be an overcomer in every situation. But for that, we will need the power of prayer, the power of the Holy Spirit, the name of Jesus Christ, and we will have to keep appealing to the Father. We will have to keep praying to the Father to supply the strength that we would remain pure and holy, not only to pray for ourselves, but also to give a covering to all our loved ones. Is someone in your family or among your friends into bad habits? Then start praying. Give them a covering and you will see the power of God begin to work. Sometimes it may take years together, my dear friends. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. One day you will see the power of God working in their lives. To that end, shall we look to the Lord in prayer. Father, even as we come back to you in prayer, knowing that prayer is powerful, not because we speak the words, but because it is addressed to you. And then when it comes to you, your power is released in answer to our prayers. We thank and praise you that you have given us that prayer power, the access to the heavenly king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, today we pray for ourselves, even as Jesus said, I have sanctified myself for them. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for being a model. Help us to walk in your footsteps. Holy Spirit God, we pray you will strengthen us, purify us, and grant us that holiness that we might keep ourselves from every evil. Holy Father, we pray that you will give us a covering of the blood in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, we would do the things that are pleasing in your eyes and we would be obedient. Lord, we pray not just for ourselves, but we surrender every family member of ours who have been caught in the net of the enemy, that, Lord, you would deliver them from that powerful snare of the fowler, and you would, Lord, sanctify them and draw them close to you. We pray for our friends. We pray for our viewers. We pray for all those who need you today to come out of the snare of the enemy, to be set free in the name of Jesus, to walk worthy of your calling. Every sickness, every disease, every power of darkness that is ruling over our lives, we cancel its power in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you will release a blessing upon all our viewers. Bless each one, their families. And Lord, till we meet again, may your presence continuously be our portion, giving you praises and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord, dear friends. Next week, we will meet again. Till then, may God bless you and keep you under his mighty wings.